Hey everybody, welcome to episode 15 of Are We There Yet? Fantasy. I'm your host, Susan Ruth. And I'm your host, Mara Edelman. And we are two humans who are going to have the real conversations and raise all the questions that we have around where the there is when it comes to dating, sex, and relationships. Yay! Yay! Fantasies. Oh my goodness. Where, where, where has your there been lately? Anything new and exciting? I have had insomnia this week. So my there has been trying to find a good night's sleep. And I don't know if it's from just general, all the stuff going on in the world, or I have a lot of projects running right now. Uh, I'm not really sure, but just having issues sleeping. Once I fall asleep, I'm fine. But getting there, it's, it's try the old masturbation sleep. trick. I mean, that works sometimes, but but it's more, you know, it's not even I'm thinking about something specifically. It's just not sleeping. Yeah. It's Very interesting. interesting. Anyway, so that's my there. It's sort of, and then this week has just been super busy with doing work. Just lots of work. What about you? What's your there? Not, not enough fun time for dating because work took over. It sounds like it does that, right? Yeah. Uh, my there fits into our fantasy. We're, today we're talking about fantasies. And I read this thing that fantasies are really good for the brain during sex because both, both all genders do this, but women more than men, where it's really hard to shut the brain off. When you can't shut the brain off, it's hard to be in the moment sexually. And if you have a fa favorite fantasy that you run through your head, you're more likely to be able to stay in the moment versus thinking about the dishes that you were supposed to finish or whatever else thing. And it saved my ass. I had to have a breast MRI, which I am a claustrophobic. I didn't pre-medicate enough. I didn't understand. You're essentially on your belly with your face in a thing, like you're getting a massage and it presses against your diaphragm, makes it hard to breathe. And I freaked out. And as a medical professional, it's really embarrassing when you're like pressing the button, get me out of the tube. No, it was so embarrassing. They calmed me down. They put me back in. And I said, I have to think about something else. And I remembered that I'd recently had a massage from this male masseuse who was fabulous. And I said, okay, you're on the massage table. He's rubbing you. And then the machine would hit my arm. I'm like, ooh, his crush just rubbed me as he walked by. <laughs> and then I just kept, because during my actual massage, I wanted to keep asking him if he's ever been asked about happy endings. And in my fantasy, while he was giving me a massage, I was thinking about him giving me a happy ending. So that literally going back to that was the only thing that kept me there for an hour. Cause every five minutes I'd stop that and go, let me out. And I go back to the fantasy, back to the fantasy. Yeah. The mind can be a powerful tool when, when, when necessary. Yeah. yeah. Like the biggest sex organ, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, so it saved me. So, so everybody should come up with a favorite fantasy if they're ever in a real sex fantasy for if they're ever in a really bad situation and try to go there in your brain. It probably was the only thing my brain could do besides freak out was sex. I think for me, food, a food fantasy would probably work too. Like eating a really great meal. Oh, maybe. Yeah. For me, I did that. Remember the book Pussy Reclamation? I said, be in touch with all your parts. And I kept thinking, and then it would go and vibrate. And I'm like, that's a big ass vibrator. <laughs> so fantasy is good for the brain. They are. They yeah. keep Thing. yeah i've only had an mri one time and it was so soothing i fell asleep <laughs> i think yes um not if you're not claustrophobic it can do that to people yeah and I, i've had one for my back it's different when you're like this and something's press yeah anyway torturous if anybody does it ever get pre-medicated you'll feel better <laughs> just take some pre-valium so today based on that Fantasies are not taboo. Fantasies are good for the brain. Fantasies are good to discuss with your partner. Here are the main, uh, the, these are the top sexual fantasies that most people can experience. And so multi-partner sex, power control slash rough sex, uh, novelty, adventure, and variety, non-monogamy, taboo, forbidden sex, voyeurism, or something called erotic flexibility, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And so, yeah, these are the main ones. And at the end, we'll talk about how men and women are a little bit different on their top five favorites and all that. But what's your favorite sexual fantasy? Ooh, uh, when I was in college, I had, there was a stretch of grassland in the median of the freeway going to and for college back to, you know, back to my hometown. And I would fantasize 
during the long ass drive up to college about making a little stop and roaming into the grass with someone and having sex in the tall grass where there were all these people going by but nobody could see you you know oh I, I have participated in some interesting things that were you know when my college boyfriend and I we were at cabin with a bunch of friends and we were uh coming back from something I don't even remember what and uh <laughs> The, all the lights were on in the cabin and we could see everybody just milling about having a good time and it was just dark enough that we could see him but they couldn't really see out there was no uh -huh. light and just right there in front of the big picture window we had yeah. sex covered in grass too and then he had to hose me down with grass and hose him down which is really cold water but it was hot too you know what i mean so so fun. i've done some some interesting things here so it's but so I would say my number one is probably the control one. I think for a lot of women like us who are hyper control of our lives, mm -hmm. the idea of being controlled to some extent uh, is certainly a fantasy of where you can just let go and let's see what happens. I mean, and in my mind, that fantasy during masturbation might conjure up all sorts of scenarios. I feel like it's the it's interesting because yours is the power and control part, but all what you've spoke to so far falls under like that voyeurism. Mm -hmm. Like you like that kind of like somebody might see me or somebody might, what if somebody could see you for real? Like, would you feel comfortable at a sex party where people are watching, watching? I don't know. It's a great question. And I think there's also an element of control in doing that kind of sexual activity where you are controlling the narrative because you can see the people, they can't see you. So that is a form of control. Oh, very and, good point. Yeah, so that's, oh. I, I have been to a sex club. I went with some friends and we watched other people having sex. I did not participate. That was surreal as well because it almost, at least for me, it took, it wasn't sexy. Everything that I watched, although I think people found it very sexy, for me, my brain took over. I was like, huh, that's fascinating. I really like this one woman's pair. She had these great socks <laughs> and I couldn't wait for her to finish what she was doing with the, the guy she was with on this couch because I really wanted to ask her about her socks. I don't think that was the point, you know what I mean? But Is so it that, that kind of, did it feel more mechanical because it was a sex club? I don't know. I don't know why. I just, I think my brain got more into the minutia instead yeah. of the overall what was happening in the club. I definitely want to go back with a partner someday. I too went to like power exchange in the city with a group of friends. We wanted to see it and late night, leave the bars in the city and head to power exchange. And it was really fascinating. And, and I really very much liked watching everybody do all these cool things. Um, I'm not sure how comfortable I'd feel with everybody staring at me. Like, yeah, we'll see someday maybe. Yeah, I did once. Uh, I mean, this is full disclosure for this show. I've talked about it before on Hey Human podcast, but I have a friend who is a sex worker. Yeah. And uh, she and one of her clients, she's very high end sex worker, meaning thousands and thousands of dollars an hour. Yeah. And one of her clients requested that they be watched. And so she asked me, would I be, would I want to watch them have sex? And I said, well, I'll get back to you. So I called my dad actually. I said, yeah, what, do you, what do you think about this? Is that hey, dad, what do you think about me watching people have sex? Yeah, well, because he's so, my dad's a scientist, you know, so he's very even keeled about these sorts of questions. And I knew that he would go full Spock and yeah. really think of it from an intellectual place. And he, he said, well, I suppose it's a lot like National Geographic sort of thing. You know, it's a, yeah. it would be an interesting experience. And I said, okay, I agree. And so I did, I watched and yeah, I totally want to say yes right away. Yeah, I, was, well, I wanted to say yes right away, but I wanted to, I, I kind of wanted to think about it too. So, uh, but I did, I, I participated. I sat in a chair. I wore a very cute top with a very cute push-up bra just because I wanted to be encouraging. Oh, and, <laughs> encouraging to them. You were their fluffer. <laughs> and it was wild. He, you know, drilled eye contact into me. And so I reciprocated oh. and it was, it was quite, and they're both very beautiful. He was very beautiful. She's yeah. very beautiful. Uh, so the whole thing was quite, quite a, a, a good thing. I did never once felt like they were going to pull me into it. Although I was certainly an active participant because we had such eye contact. I love eye contact. Glad I did it. So I could check that off of very interesting life experience. <laughs> All these things are fun. So uh, going back to the initial thing is like, 
fantasies are not taboo. Every, I, I would assume most people have a form of fantasies that they think about. Um, the multi-partner sex one um, is the most common mm -hmm. for, for Americans. And pretty much it comes down to like, you're the star of the show if you have a couple people paying all attention to you kind of thought, right? Which yeah. is interesting. It's true. Um, you know, I've always thought about having like a couple men. Um, I, I have done it when I was younger, but I'd like, you know, as an adult, it would be interesting. How was it when you were younger? It was fine, but nobody seemed uncomfortable. But again, I was younger. I wanted, I wish that I was more open to experiencing these things later in life. But as you know, I'm kind of more closed off to like, you know, lots of sex and germs and, you know, the world's a different place. I'm a different person, whatever. I had a, a guy ask me uh, kind of recently, we were just talking in general about experiences. And he said, have you ever had a threesome? And I said, I have not. And, and he sort of, let out a little sigh. So oh, I'm relieved. I said, why are you relieved? He's like, I don't know. I just, I was hoping you're going to say you had it. And I thought, okay. Well, I mean, he I think that's to be your wrong. first Because he wanted to be your first person to have a threesome with. I think that men do have that sort of the virginal fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I think that's definitely a more totally. male oriented fantasy of, yeah. uh, of women being virginal and them so. being the first conqueror of that island. It didn't come up on the top ones, but it is definitely on there. Um, so essentially, if you want to have multi-partner sex, um, you would want to share it with your partner. Um, and, and it's always good to do the fantasy. It's good. It's actually okay to have the fantasy talks in bed. Sex talks out of bed. They've, I've read some studies that fantasy talks can kind of spice things up. Um, you know, I've been thinking it might be hot if we were have another person in bed. If you actually want to do it, there's millions of ways to go about that nowadays. If you want to do that, there's sex clubs, there's meetup groups, there's, I mean, yeah, millions of ways to have group sex if that's what you're looking for. Be safe. Be safe. Please. Yeah. Uh, STD testing, condoms. All that stuff. Uh, check for monkey pox. Does anybody have COVID symptoms? I mean, it's gotten a little more extreme than it used to be when you just thought, I don't want to get in a section. You test. show up to a sex club, you're in a little bubble. A little uh, gerbil bubble. Oh, I can buy uh, one of those plastic yeah. balls. One of the plastic balls that move. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So number two for that comes up is power, control, or rough sex. So the BDSM concept. Um, and essentially, um, it's about control. That daddy, stepdaughter, professor, student, coach. And that is one of my favorites, I have to say. Very much is my favorite. Um, it got a little complicated when you had all these coaches who were abusing people because it's one of my favorite fantasies. Like, oh, I'm a little cheerleader and you're my coach. Ew, it makes it, it changes the dynamic a little bit, but it is one of the top fantasies for people is that control. And um, the next one. Narrative, I think is fun regardless. I think pretending to be people you're not, uh, like the idea of meeting in a bar and acting like you don't know each other and, and fun. People, yeah. I mean, it just sort of spice things up. It's very low stakes. Yeah. Low stakes. Mm -hmm. Well, this, all of these talk about each of these are going to give us you a way to just think about it with your partner or act it out if that's what you so choose. Right. Um, so non-monogamy, uh, open relationships, swinging. Um, I know, I know many people who are kind of living that lifestyle and I've actually um, been interested to talk to a couple of people on Bumble. I have a video date possibly set up with a couple because I'm curious. And actually it dawned on me, like I'm looking for my forever person, but it's hard to find. I have to wait for the universe to line all that up. And I'm a little bored and a little lonely and wouldn't mind some sexual activity. And it dawned on me that I might feel more comfortable with a couple because the women gets involved and it's more conversating and radical honesty and probably less of that game playing lying business. So yeah, it depends on the couple, but sure. No, you never know. But I feel like it opens up, it, it changes the entire dynamic. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to have the conversation. Uh, also, I have, I have no experience in that realm. So I don't know. I've never been with um, with more than one person. Well, I have, but this is different. It's like being with a couple, like ethical. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. I'm just curious. I think it would be fascinating. I can't wait to hear about it when you do. Something else, I want to have the conversation so I can bring it back to everybody here. Yeah what I've learned from this couple because there's a lot going on in the world that didn't used to they used to go on under the covers maybe <laughs> so non-monogamy essentially um you know fantasizing about your partner sleeping with other people um essentially it's not cheating it's a fantasy um 
And if you want to do something about it, again, it's having the conversation. Although I think that is a cuck, a cuck holding is certainly a fantasy for people watching their partner have sex with someone else. Much more for males than females. Men, there's something hot about that for men, about the idea of watching your partner have sex with somebody else, for mm-hmm. sure. And if you want to do that, again, um, not it, that's a huge, that would be a much bigger thing. I almost think that is worth getting a, a sexuality coach, a counselor. Like if you're in a long-term relationship and all of a sudden you're talking about being non-monogamous, whether it's ethical non-monogamy or polyamory, that's a huge, you need to put some work into that before you decide to dive into that as a couple, because I've heard some bad stories where it's with some clients and friends where it just hasn't gone as well as they would have liked. Um, that's, that's a really, it. really excellent recommendation to seek out a sex coach or a, a relationship coach to, to navigate that. And there are, there are certainly people out there that I was about to say, that is not me because I'm not experienced in that department. But if anybody wants references, they can email me or email us at, at, the, at our email down below in the links. Uh, email A-T-W-Y at gmail.com. A-W-T-Y. Oh, I got it wrong again. Dyslexia abounds. It's just, are we? It's just the initials of are we there yet? So it's are email. We there yet? A-W-T-Y at gmail.com. If anybody wants that, because I have access to about 300 sexologists through my sexology group on Facebook. And I can just say, anybody really good at ethical, you know, non-monogamy. So if anybody is interested in that, I would say seek out some help Mm -hmm. because it's a much more complicated. Uh, And then we're down to my favorite, taboo and forbidden sex, which is things like um, the voyeurism a little bit. Oh, sorry. No, my favorite is actually the, the power stuff. But this is my second favorite one out of all of them. Taboo, forbidden, voyeurism. Uh, what are some other examples? Things like, um, I'm blanking. I am curious to know what it would be like to have sex with a vampire and a werewolf, not necessarily together, but to see what the differences there would be. Like Halloween costume style, Halloween's coming. No, like actual werewolves and actual I, vampires. I hear you. You know, if we go back I to- I grew up reading Anne Rice, so I can't help myself. And what was the latest one that came out? The latest vampire. I really thought the werewolf guy was hot. That tall, dark, and handsome does it for me. I don't know which- um, Oh, I can't remember the name right now. You know, it's all the, it's for the youngins. The new Oh, oh uh, Twilight stuff? Yes, that. <laughs> I watched the movie, I, I couldn't help myself it. because there was sex and hot boys. How can you say no to that? But things like things that come under the taboo and forbidden sex are things like licking feet, um, things that are forbidden, things that are going to uh, cause people to feel a little bit like I, like they could get in trouble for it, right? Um, arrested, those types of things. Not like, the- like animals or? No, well, that would be on there, but I would assume I would hope that nobody does that one. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, the difference between fantasy and reality. It's, it's, you can think that stuff, but please don't, please don't hurt animals and please don't hurt children. I was reading this really fascinating article, not to go into very dark areas, but that in Japan, uh, there were people that were ordering uh, blow up, like sex doll, not blow up, but that really lifelike sex dolls that were in the visage of, of young people. Wow. And it, I know, and it, and there was the argument of like, that's a slippery slope. That is and a very slippery I mean, slope. that's the thing. It's like, if you are having those kinds of fantasies where you want to uh, hurt uh, children or animals, I greatly suggest seeking someone to talk to about that stuff. Please don't yeah. act on it. Don't hurt others. Um, oh. So just yeah, want to yeah. put that out there because it is a part of the reality is those people exist. Yes, they do. Yeah. And some will never act on it. Thank goodness. Uh, so finding a therapist and having those conversations so you don't act on it. Yes. I would have to research this further, but one thought that came to mind is that if they could use that as a tool to never act on it, that's a positive. That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah, what, yeah. The, that's what the article was arguing. That, I would have that said that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It was a philosophical debate as to whether or not one was one was actually facilitating an escalation versus facilitating a de-escalation. It was really fascinating. I I agree. Wow. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, wow. it's something we had to talk about because that's the reality. And oh, it's the reality that we you know. Both of us are like, oh, you don't want to talk about it because it's a it's a very slippery slope and it's a very uncomfortable place. Um, but it's a reality. So it's a reality, unfortunately. Uh, and then that brings us to voyeurism. 
So watching people engage, um, watching other people, having other people watch you. We talked about that. If you want to do that, there's places. Um, it, Potential it, voyeurism seems nice. Yeah. Yes. But unfortunately, it does say that, you know, if, if you're being an exhibitionist, it can be illegal. Like public yeah. sex is illegal. So be careful about where you're doing those things. Technically, what I did with my college boyfriend is not quite consensual. It was between he and myself, but not if those people had suddenly turned on the floodlights out outside that was part of the excitement though that any minute someone could turn the lights on yes. on us outside yes would have been very nice for them i'm sure but well, I, don't know. I don't know some of them might have been like Woo, i like that <laughs> ah youth <laughs> um youth right also again if you want to do voyeurism go to a sex club and have people watch you there's ways to have that happen right mm -hmm. and then that brings us to novelty adventure and variety so sex on the beach, sex in the middle of a median, because it's novel, uh, fantasy uh, centered around um, new sexual activities, things like we've never done anal. It's not, it's a novelty. Let's try that. Um, anything that feels like unknown or new, and especially in a long-term relationship, novelty really is paramount to keeping your sex in life alive mm -hmm. and i think down below we link to something I, i'm forgetting the name right now it's uh it's a app you can do spice spice it up i think i'll have to look at it later yeah. but there will be a link essentially you and your partner get to go back and forth on an app and then it combines the two fantasies that you both agree that you think are cool so that opens up the dialogue it also gives you ideas it keeps things novel so you don't get bored in a long-term relationship sexually yeah mm -hmm. well that's cool uh what do we got next next up we have i uh, love the idea of a, of a there's all sorts of games too there's 365 ways to spice up your sex life books there's yes. there's all sorts of books out there that have recommendations of things like you know meeting up pretending to be other people and uh or going on little weekend trips or a day date or anything like that. You know? I really want to date somebody who has the energy and wherewithal to also think that way. Because how much fun can that be? If both of your brains are kind of like, what's next? Ooh, let's try. I mean, right? With yeah. an, again, that app will help people decide what makes you both feel comfortable. But yeah. I'm putting it out to the universe. Send me somebody who wants to have a little fun. Come on. Yeah, on that show, Modern Family, Phil and Claire Dumphy really had that squared away they they were good at keeping the the love alive by having an active fantasy life as well they were cute yeah i like them yeah, they're, they're, cute. They were, they're a cute tv couple yeah so this one's interesting next up is passion and romance this really falls more and i have a list of men and women's fantasies but passion and romance so long walks on the beach and treated you know um like royalty and being taken care of uh, putting effort in, taking somebody to dinner, all of those things can make people feel um, it's, it's, it's on the list, you know, the rose petals in the bathtub that, that it doesn't do it for me, as you can tell by my tone of voice. <laughs> it might be something I'd like to try someday, but it's not my top ones. Would you, yeah. would, that, would that do Also it to know that sex doesn't start 10 minutes before insertion or, or it starts at the beginning of the day with how are you, uh, you know, a soft touch. Let me do that for you. Let's be partners. Let's take care of each other. Let's be sex. Yeah. I mean, all, there's all sorts of ways and you will get to know your partner and what they like for sure. But know that that it's it's also helpful to incorporate this stuff throughout the cycle yeah. of the day and not just, oh, it's 20 minutes before sex. I'm going to be nice to you now. You know, <laughs> Very, very true. You, you mentioned that one a lot and I think you should mention it on every single episode. <laughs> Because it's such a true point, like the flirting and the back and forth is so much of what creates all of this. I think it's because for me personally, I am such a, that, that certainly sparks me yeah. flirty, just even a look, just oh, a yeah. look or a certain yeah. word or just uh -huh. a, I don't know. I think that that revs you up throughout the day. It's yeah. ready to go so that it's you don't. Me, it's presence. It's a, yeah. an actual presence. Being present. For me, it also reminds me of that thought that like, you're not going to forget about it at the end of the night because you're exhausted because you've been thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking oh, about man. it, builds it up. So that is a good point for men and women, but especially men, build your person up, build your female up. Because as again, as women, it takes a lot longer for our brains to click into sex. Oh, sex. 
And, and we're also being told constantly by everything around us why our bodies aren't good enough or, you know, or we're not good enough or whatever. And I'm no, men are also being told that. But I think it's way, way over the top for women. And yeah. so pull us out of our minds of, oh, I'm a little fat here. Or I'm a little this here. Or I have a stretch mark there or a scar there and all that. And it'll definitely help. Yes. Let's take more romance, I think. To take your brain out of it. It's interesting. Um, there was a piece. Oh, sorry. Let me grab something because I, I forgot. I forgot where I was at. But there was. It was a fascinating concept. That how how you I'm, see if I get it right. How you fantasize often leads shows you an area of lack in your life. For instance, if you want to have multiple partners, maybe it's that you're feeling like you're not getting enough attention. If you want all the focus on you, maybe it's because you're not feeling appreciated enough. So each of these. It's interesting to look at your fantasies and realize that maybe they're coming from a place. Perfect example. My favorite are power and control because I am so sick of being in control that I just want somebody else to take over. So it does kind of show you the areas in your life to work on. It's an, it was an interesting, interesting concept. For me personally, it's very sexy when someone says to me, uh, I'd like to go out with you. Great. And then instead of saying, what would you like to do? They say, we're going to do this and that know that I'm celiac. So that changes some things, obviously, but yeah. other than that, and I don't want to jump out of an airplane, just FYI. But other than that, that, that to, to say, Hey, I'd like to take you out. I'll take care of it. I'll pick you up or I'll meet you here. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> I think that's very sexy. I like it when somebody has planned it out. Just like when I ask somebody to go do something, yep. I will plan. Oh, I love, so I curate my own dates all the time and I can't wait to do that with somebody else. I met this lady a couple nights ago and we were talking about dating and she said that it was their anniversary. So she planned a date, took them and did all this dinner and stuff. And it's a surprise. They just tell each other what to put on, what kind of clothing to wear. Yeah, that's important for and sure. And then his time is coming up next week and they do this all the time. Even though it was their anniversary, one person plans a date and surprises the other person and they know each other well enough to know what each other's like enough. I love that concept. Love it. But it also goes back to the fantasy thing, right? Of like, take control and don't make me think about it. Yeah. This is an interesting concept, erotic flexibility. So essentially um, gender bending fantasies. Mm -hmm. So where somebody wants to cross dress or be a female in the moment or have a partner switch their gender or sexual fluidity fantasies where one person acts out being another person. For instance, like when I used a strap on on somebody, that was something that right? It's a sexual fluidity fantasy. It wasn't mine, but I acted it up. Uh, because how would you feel if, if a male partner came to you and said, I want to dress like a woman and go out, how would you feel about that? Personally, I feel like I'm very much more attracted to masculine energy. And so I would be fine if it was in the bedroom. Sure. Let's try that. I don't think I would feel super turned on if we were doing, I wouldn't be embarrassed. Everybody can do what they want. I just don't think I would feel horribly turned on because I like a masculine man and like vans and a t-shirt and jeans. You know, that's just my thing. What if they said, I'm more, I want to act out this fantasy and go out and do this thing with you. So you sometimes said what I'm getting at is I think sometimes when a partner comes to us and says, this is my fantasy, they might not float your boat personally. Oh. I would always that, that it's okay to, to yeah. like support where they are and, 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 and be a part of that. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, again, like I didn't think that I would like to strap on things so much, but I, it was actually very cool to be in charge because yeah. I don't like to be in charge. I want somebody else to be in charge, but sometimes flipping that around. Yeah, so I, I think that would be fascinating and interesting. I, yeah. I think everybody should do their best to allow their partner to have their fantasies, no matter what they are and discuss it and then do what you can to help them have that. Yeah. Yeah. And to that end too, if you're super uncomfortable about it, voice that as well. Yes. And that's okay too. I mean, it, this is all negotiations, all of it. Entire relationships are built on compromise. And I always say to people, isn't it? I've had a couple of clients. I'm like, isn't it fascinating that you talk about the finance? Not everybody does, but you talk about the finances and where you want to go on vacation and all these things are so normal but you're telling me that you're not talking about sex. You're not talking about what you like and don't like. You're not talking about your fantasies because it's such a taboo subject and everybody's so worried about hurting people's feelings and being uncomfortable. And so I encourage people, this is just another topic to compromise and communicate on. Yeah. I know absolutely. that's crazy. Yeah. Um, oh, so the reason that this one works is because it's very interesting for people to get to explore different roles. And uh, it also allows people to inject something new, which goes back to that kind of novelty one. 
Mm -hmm. um, or being able to do what you're not supposed to do, right? We all want to have a little bit of that risque. I'm not supposed to do that. This isn't, no, this isn't fit into the normal box, whatever. There is no normal box people, by the way. But again, yeah. don't hurt animals, don't hurt children, don't hurt each other. And then everything else is normal. Unless you like to get hurt and your partner oh. likes, if, if that's an agreement, that's okay too. I mean, the BDSM co community yeah. is certainly thriving and that oh. is set up on really specific rules and, and is a healthy way to, to explore those things. Well, in that case, you have safe words and you have a whole, and when I say hurt each other, I mean like hurt each other. No, I know what you meant. Yeah. Uh, I guess I want to be specific for people listening to. Yes. Like I had a, a, a coworker when I worked in the emergency room who came in and she was so embarrassed. Talking about being embarrassed as a medical provider. I was embarrassed that I had to get out of the tube. She had to get, uh, she was having very rough anal sex with her partner and he was mad at her and was being incredibly rough and like burst part of her colon. <laughs> Uh, so, and they ended up, you know, the police were involved, but she had to come into the emergency room where she worked with a horrible injury. So that kind of hurt. I mean, yeah, for kind sure. of hurting a little choking, a little, I don't mind a little, all that kind of hurting. Oy! I don't think I've ever been choked. I don't know that I would enjoy that personally. Oh, oh uh, you don't, you don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> but as a claustrophobic person, yes, again, there's levels of choking. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> There's levels of gentle choking versus I can't breathe. Yeah. It's more of a holding. Audio auto erotic was it auto asphyxia auto erotic that auto -erotic, there's a auto erotic asphyxia. asphyxia. There it is. Uh, you know that has claimed the lives of some people, and uh, so be very safe with that. Is all I'm saying. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I do. I don't personally like that form of severe choking. <laughs> so. Bottom line, we'll learn a lot about each other more. <laughs> these things come out. I think uh, um, I just always think everybody should try everything once and see if they like it because you don't know till you try it. But this is a great example. You and I discussing this, even though we're not partners, that it's this is a great example of how it can be fun and funny and, and interesting yeah. to ask other people, you know, what what turns you on? What are you into? What's a secret fantasy? You know, and respect that vulnerability i cannot emphasize that enough if yeah. someone is in a moment of vulnerability and saying this is the stuff that turns me on it might not be the norm respect that space please don't use it against them don't tell your friends all about it oh. don't you know respect that intimacy and that vulnerability it's so paramount in a relationship to have that trust that once that trust is broken you will never get it back never Fortunately, they've done studies that oftentimes if you're having a hard time truly communicating about sex and fantasies and all of that, likely communication in your relationship is broken in many other areas. Yeah. And so the more you can communicate well about sex and fantasies, the better your overall relationship communication is going to be. Yeah. yeah. So again, whenever you want to do these things, communicate in detail beforehand, communicate before and after. How did it go? What, what do we like and not like? Have a safe word if you need it, um, no matter what fantasy, like have a safe word that says, yeah, maybe I'm not as comfortable with this as I thought I was. Uh, do some research on best practices. Um, everybody can kind of face so that everybody's satisfied with the outcome. <laughs> uh, continue implementing safe sex practices. Go really slow. There's no rush. Communicate and stay calm if things don't go according to plan, because yeah. you can always revisit it, communicate again, fix it. They are a normal part of life. I would... I didn't actually look this up, but I can assume that everybody has at least one sexual fantasy. I can't imagine that somebody would not, except for possibly the asexual community. I'll look that back for another time. There are people who have very lo low sex drive, asexual community, not, yeah. Again, I, yeah, anyway. Although asexual, the, from the research I've done, I have not yet had an asexual person on Hey Human podcast, but I've spoken with people in dynamic relationships with people who are asexual. And from my understanding, it's still cuddling. There might still be kissing, all that stuff. It just yeah. doesn't lead to a yeah. penetrative sex of some that. sort. Yeah. I, it is not my specialty because most of my, if I have clients come to me, it's because they want to talk about sexual issues. Yeah. I do have a lot of patients at the clinic who may not be asexual, but could care less about sex. That's usually more about communication with their partners. They've been married too long, haven't been communicating. Uh, but it would be interesting. I'll do, I'm going to learn more about asexuality. We'll have to have somebody on someday. Yeah. I would love that. If anybody out there is asexual and would like to be on the show, reach out yes. to us. Yeah. 
reach out to us at our email down below. This also, don't getting, forget this to follow. Cool. <laughs> getting very aggressive with me. <laughs> she's sh for, for the people that are only listening, she's shaking hands with her plant. How oh, that's right. Yeah, my plant is uh, is getting in on the action. So <laughs> I do think. Uh, oh, and I keep forgetting. I, we've. Um, we want more questions from people. So if anybody has any questions or future topics they'd like to hear, don't forget to tell us. I found it interesting too. So I uh, compiled a list from the study about the top five for women and the top five for men. So celebrities falls on both the list. Mm -hmm. so porn stars, athletes, musicians, Susan Roos of the world, who knows? Any, like, because they said, like, even like, I have a million pretend boyfriends <laughs> and a couple girlfriends that are in the uh, in the famous world for sure. Oh, no, I was talking to people who feel that way about you, silly. Oh, about me? Oh, hilarious. Like, you play guitar and you have a lot of information. You might be one of those people that people are fantasizing about. Like, I, I say this to a lot of people that, especially when they're having, you know, when they're sort of down the doves, I say, you know what? Look up. Someone out in the world is definitely masturbated about you today. That, <laughs> that is such a good, <laughs> don't feel so dreary. Somebody is thinking about you. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. So that falls on both of them. The ones that are different, men kind of have a little bit of more of that cougar milf um Britney Spears oh sorry that's the different one cougar oh. milk like <laughs> older female versus and they also have the younger the the braids yeah. that is a big thing people oh, love the braids thing. power yeah. dynamics falls for both men and women for women that are separate so women are, have these fantasies and men do not so the as much some men might romance making love flower petals in the bath water or wanting your partner just to know kind of exactly when you need it, what you need, how to do it. I have had a couple of partners like that in my life, not every single time, obviously, but in those moments where they know exactly what to do or take your hand and lead you to the bedroom. And like, there's just that, that like, like, oh, you know what to do and you know what to do. Uh, yeah. Be careful not to fall into the trap of being, rep I had a boyfriend that was excellent in bed, excellent kisser, excellent uh, all the way around. But it got a bit rutty in that that he knew what I like and would just do it A B C D E F G, A B C D E F G, A B C D E F G. And after a while, you kind of want some Z's and some X's and some L's, and, you know, or maybe go backwards. I don't know. But it, even even something great, yeah, can be uh, tedious sometimes. Which goes back to going back to the novelty category as one of the fantasies. Is yeah. even if he would have gone backwards. Yeah. You would have felt some novelty in the situation. Yeah. Yeah. They've done studies. This is interesting. Men tend to get more in the rut than women do because they're like, oh my God, I finally figured out your. <laughs> I finally figured out what you're different than every other woman, but I figured you out and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to keep doing it that way. And women's biggest complaint and reason for not wanting to have sex with their male partner is that they're bored because it's always the same. So that, again, that's communication. Babe, you have me figured out, but let's. Let's spice it up. Yeah. And there's a lot of magazines and articles out there. Learn a new trick. Like try, there's so many things catered to, to, all, to, all, to all the sexes to like, just go and discover something new. And you don't have to say, hey, hey, you know, I figured this new thing out. Just try it. See what happens. <laughs> They'll let you know. <laughs> They'll let you know. They'll let you know if they liked it or didn't like it for sure. Right. Uh, Last thought on fantasies. Okay. Why are they important? Ex to experience more arousal because you're curious about different things, to meet unfulfilled needs, which goes back to that like maybe there's maybe you want more attention. So that fantasy about more partners to escape reality, like me and that MRI tube. Thank God for that fantasy. To explore a sexually taboo desire, to plot out a future sexual encounter, to relax or reduce anxiety, to feel to feel more sexually confident. Or because we're bored and we want to make sure that we have other things to think about. Also burns calories. Oh, yeah. Uh, thinking? The, really? Oh, yeah. I love that. I'm gonna the, brain, the brain requires a lot of calories to do its thing. That's why when you're uh, working on a project really heavily or maybe yeah. kids are working on tests and stuff, the food fuel is very important. That's why you're starving when you're done working on a project your brain needs that energy or that you've been thinking so hard on something yeah i'm gonna keep thinking hard about sex and fantasy so i burn some more calories there you go. <laughs> and so we took a quiz yes 
Uh, and for me, mine came there were two. Out. There were two quizzes that I took that you sent me. Oh, why am I? I always do this. I need to be better about remembering what we put on there. Hold on. So I took the quiz. I'll find it. Tell me about your quizzes while I look it up. Yeah. So uh, the first quiz I took, the quizzes are down there, uh, said, uh, what kind of fantasy person are you? And uh, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting it confused. I only took one test on this one. So there were two, though. One of them is the one that I was referring to. I couldn't remember the name. For the couples, it's called we should try it.com. Yeah, and, and I didn't I didn't take that one because I don't I'm not in a couple. So exactly. but, but that, I did the other one. Yeah. That, that's the online questionnaire for couples where each person answers about their fantasies and it gives you your top ones that combine. Yes. And the quiz was called What is your sexual fantasy? Yeah, and I'm a taboo or forbidden is what they categorize me based on my answering of the it's question. True. We're never yeah. the same thing, we're always so opposite. Yeah, so the, the quiz is below. Don't forget to subscribe. Please email us if you have any questions or comments, or maybe you want to be on the show. Maybe you've got something you want to talk about. Uh, we're really excited. We're trying to grow this. Please share with your friends. Uh, and we're going to keep bringing content that we think you'll be interested in, that we're definitely interested in. Love this stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What's coming up next week? In two weeks, we have Dr. Two weeks. <laughs> yeah, in two weeks, we have Dr. Mara Edelman on the show. She is a has a PhD in communication and has worked with uh, all of this all of these topics in her career. She's retired now, and yes, her name is Dr. Miss Mara Edelman. So we it's met. It's just going to be you in a mustache yes. and glasses. No. It'll be like the fake Mara. I'll do this, and then I'll duck down and come back as the other Mara Edelman. <laughs> I can't believe she has the same name as you. So I'll tell the story in a couple of weeks, but we met serendipitously. We both lived in Napa and she has agreed to come talk to us about uh, the discourse of intercourse. So essentially a lot of what we talked about today, but how important it is to talk about sexual activity in all different realms. And she's, yeah, yes. excited. Yeah. Yay, that's in two weeks. That's in two weeks, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Mara, as always. I love you. Thank you for your watching everyone and uh we're you know we're just plowing ahead so moving forward here we go hey. everybody stay well and stay connected bye